All right, I am starting a new video. I'm sorry it's been a long time, but it's been busy as you all know. So anyway, let me get into this. This is dealing with OpenXR and VR. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just look at the latest driver real quick. And currently, I just downloaded it today, which is October 18th, 2023. But I'm using the 545.84. And I'm going to go through some of the basic settings you should be using with VR. And we'll go over that. All right, here we go. So whether or not you're playing IL-2 or DCS, there is some little differences. And I'll show that real quick. But we'll start with IL-2. Image scaling, you don't need that on. Again, everything I say of off applies to flat panel, not to VR. You know, so when I'm saying it's off, this is only work on your flat screen. So image scaling off, uh, anisotropic application controlled, FAA off, off for the gamma. Now I've tested the gamma both ways. And when I go into some other settings, the gamma blows everything up. So I still recommend not using the artificial gamma and then what the game is doing because it really makes things distorted very cartoony um and the colors are gross all right the anti-aliasing and you could test it but i don't recommend it all right it won't affect uh, performance it's just visual so test application controlled um turn that off for anti-aliasing mode or right, just controlled basically Transparency is off, off on the background, again, flat panel. Use all, make sure you set it. And this, I just downloaded, so I'm double checking as we do it and then change that, so. Um, off on the maintenance, low latency, again, flat panel. Max frame rate, flat panel. It doesn't matter what you pick on the technology. It's, you know, it doesn't matter because it's not, you turn your monitor off, it really won't matter. Um, I'll just set it to fixed because I'm not I don't use the monitor monitor uh, multi-frame off and uh, GL just do auto and don't use global just set it um, Nvidia set that normal for the power only if you're overclocking um, if you're not then just go ahead and bump it up because you should be overclocking it for to prevent the card from artificially down clocking the game when it detects a high heat and they set the heat pretty low and when you're stressing the card for VR you're gonna hit want to reach the top limits of the heat that it allows so you don't do it you don't get the down throttling and that costs a lot of stutter and issues in the game and then it even crashes so it's I recommend right now I'll show you what I'm using and it's a very important you get right from their website because some jerks were putting viruses in the program and loading it up. So only get it from MSI. Go to their website. Make sure it's official MSI website. And don't just Google and click. Uh, anyway, so once you get that, you can go in and it has this auto uh, overclock feature. When you turn it on and you start it, and I'm not going to do that, because I don't want to lock everything up. It, you just make sure everything's off, you know, have your VR running or anything, just the basic, this program. Let it do its testing and it'll automatically give you a nice curve. So here's one I had done earlier. I, I, I'll run it again later. But it's giving me a plus 200 memory and the curve, it automatically did. And I set the power limit to the maximum, you know, without blowing it up now remember that's just the factory default max not override clocking you're not doing trying to break world records it's just telling the card it can go full speed without down clocking and don't go over 88 so then you damage it but i don't recommend leaving this on 24 7 because why do you need to run your car at you know and you know nascar speeds when you're just surfing email you know, so don't do that. It, it, the, the system should not 
overclock it all the time but I don't like giving it access to maximum power and temp when I'm doing stuff and maybe I get a you know a, a glitch in the system and I don't want to crash my computer so I don't do that just to avoid it just for you know safety practices and I'll apply it I'm actually reset and that's what I do before I'm after I'm done flying so I would just pick the save after I did it I would apply it and then when I'm done I would reset after I'm done flying and then I just shut it down you don't close it because if you close it then it doesn't go up you know, have to restart the computer or restart the program and it will reload but depends on the settings and there's a lot of good things in this program besides the overclocking it gives you the monitoring so you can see well, you know where your cores are at how much uses and the temperatures and if you're getting a crazy spike or something and I did this when I put the liquid cooling on my CPU because I wanted to make sure I wasn't uh, spiking or having any issues and then and it shows me all of that so that's nice so not just the GPU I can go down to the CPU and I can see my average temps which is you know I have liquid cool so I can keep it pretty good and you know go from there all right so I'll be putting cuts and edits in this but for people you know wanting to understand that and maybe don't understand that's a good one to review and and if you have any questions let me know but if you know that skip ahead most everything else is going to stay the same in the previous videos um, I think the only main thing you need to do is uh, make sure the vertex is off that's a big one and back to where it was before I lost my thought sorry uh -huh. All right, off, off, all, low latency off, fixed. Okay, that's where I was. All right, and we did that. Normal, there we are. Application controlled on the refresh. I just have multiple monitors, don't matter. Um, allow, high quality. Now, it defaults quality, so always bump it up. Now, if you have an old system, 2080s or whatever, go back to my old videos, stick with that. This is mainly focusing on the 4080 and better. Uh, 3090s do qualify for this because they're still monsters and they're good uh, and they can do all of this because they have the VRAM. Um, so high quality gives you the best quality in the game, makes it 4K. You can't get it without that. Optimization, I turn that off. That causes a lot of artifacting in the game. In fact, you don't want any of these optimizations unless you have an older card and you're trying to get more FPS. Uh, that's the way to go. Threaded auto. Triple. Now on DCS, the only difference will be on <laughs> for threaded optimization. I, I didn't do auto. It just works with it on. Uh, doesn't seem to do anything for IL2. Uh, off, off, one, and then auto. Make sure it's set and save, apply. Boom. And I'll have to do that for DCS. But I'm not going to go through everything. But I will show you how. Because when I downloaded the new uh, driver today, it swapped it into that all right so here on the DCS I did pretty much the same thing I don't that ah, was on I see D, when it downloaded it just switched a lot of my stuff so I'll go through it later but the main only difference is I have the threaded optimization on um, again everything else was the same all right let me get out of this I'm gonna fly DCS right now Oh, yeah, I'm using this. No ads. Ugh. All right, now I'm going to get into the uh, config. And we'll need to jump back and forth once you get into the next step, which is the oversampling, which you can do with the uh, better cards. And I'm not having any problems. And then the clarity is just, wow. It really makes the game pop. All right. Um, everything will be the same, and I'll post this. I... Oh, I needed to fix this because I didn't change it. It needs to be the same number. And I found some issues with that. I noticed it earlier. So the detailed res is always going to be matching your original height res. I think there's a maximum of like 2,000 something. But I haven't had any issues. And it 
get less glitches, crashes, etc. And I did see some weird game crashing when those numbers didn't match. And that's the only thing I could come up with that, that disappeared when I fixed it. So that was a lot of testing. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm actually oversampling what the HP Reverb G2 can do. And in a minute when I switch, I, um, I'm going to be recording it but I don't know if it'll record my voice. But I'm going to go into the toolkit, and I'll show you how to do that and what it does for the game. Um, these don't really matter, but I do recommend lower settings for uh, the wind height. Keep it at the, the resolution. Because if you get too much uh, higher on these numbers, it messes up the maps uh, and the load screens and stuff like that, and it doesn't, it doesn't work good. So I'm going to go into a couple of other things that I've learned. One of them was given to me by one of the viewers. I tested it. Um, I've been testing it for over a month. And now I'm going to go ahead and share with everybody so we can all enjoy this. All right. Let me turn this off. Okay. I hope this is recording the voice. Otherwise, I'm probably not going to get this done. All right. So now we're going to go into the HP Reverb G2 OpenXR Toolkit update. And it's just Toolkit. And I should, should name a brand because it works for a lot of brands. All right. So we're going to the Toolkit program. And I need to just switch this to stay on. There we go. All right. There and now we can work. Okay, now I learned a couple tricks thanks to people in the community, and I'm going to share it. So, performance. I highly recommend uh, that you go into advance. I've been setting it to 91 just so it, that's what's capping on the, the test. Um, oops, darn it. And then I did the same on the frame rate throttling. Uh, we have found. If you drop down 91, it's going to stay about 88. So I recommend just giving it a, like 93, 94. So it's a neutral. But what it does is it seems to focus the game and it causes less um, uh, screen freeze or leaping or jumping. It's just better. Um, it may be a placebo, but try it on off. Everyone who tried it definitely noticed. And that was before I went into anything else I'm going to show you. One of the big... Uh, bonuses I've noticed. Oh wait, did I click out? Maybe I did. Try again. Go on. All right, try again. Wait a second. Come on. There we go. Okay, I must have missed screen. Is sharpness? Don't leave it at a hundred percent. If you're getting FPS bottlenecking, that's the first thing I would mess with before I downgrade settings because the sharpness is, is like anti aliasing and then it's forcing it to be a sharper image and that's what it's doing. It's using like, you know, CSA, which is an FSR type pipe product. Um, it's a, a ATI. But we found on the higher cards, CAS is the best setting. FSR doesn't look as good. I've tried it. It's fast, definitely smooth and you can have it now maxed out pretty much. But even with the upsampling, it didn't do it. NIS is probably the old uh, code for AT, you know, NVIDIA cards, but it's just pure garbage. I only recommend it for older cards that are suffering uh, with playability. All right, so let's switch to the appearance real quick. Doing this again on me. There he goes. All right. So turbo mode, again, just for resets. If you're using it, it's really not doing a lot of this stuff it just overrides it all right so post processing on sunglasses off now contrast is huge okay so now here's a quick way to do it if you have the control key and the shift key and then the f1 or 2 to go up and down it screams up and down real fast so you don't have you don't have to do go click 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 oh, actually whoops yeah i gotta switch key function here real quick so i don't bounce around i don't want true night on off off okay but this lets you quickly increase the contrast and decrease. And that's crucial if you're in a real bright map like snow or something and you're trying to see. This will help you. And so you can visually do this while you're flying and up and down. Now, 
you can blow the colors stupid, but you won't be able to spot anything because the blacks will wash out. So you go, I've been running about 90, and then I just mess with the brightness, you know, when I'm in to get it comfortable. One of the things you're going to see by playing with the contrast and exposure, etc., is yeah, I mean, if you did that, this physically hurt your eyes in VR. So you have a, on the flat screen recording, this might look like something happening, but you can't see anything because it's all just lit up. So you will see, you know, what, what you need to adjust like a television set to get like a movie quality in your VR and you're, you're spotting the black dots and the contrast is right. This is it. Don't be afraid to use it now. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, you can change the saturation. It doesn't look good on this too, but in the VR it's different. So you have to, you know, mess with it. I mean, I can, I can just mess with it right now and, and it won't matter because I'm a, I'm going to tune it in just like I'm watching a movie and I want to watch, you know, Star Wars. So it's all black. So I'm going to change settings, but then I'm going to put on like, you know, some movie in the, you know, Lawrence of Arabia and they want to redo the contrast because it's going to be washed out. So there's a lot of little things you can do. Um, vibrance, I don't really use. It's just a dark map. It makes the lights pop like a real headlight. And that's about it. Uh, building fires, stuff like that, look a little more vibrant. But in the daylight, it just washes your colors and it's garbage. It, it, it makes the sun ridiculous. So catch 22. Don't look at the sun, you're fine. You know, In the game, it's almost like the real thing. Highlights turn down to 99.9. That helps with that artifacting a little bit. You can down a little more if you're getting some effects, but that will help. I found turning the shadow on dropped FAPS because it made the shadows a little too dark and maybe accentuate, you know, added some layers to it or something. Also, it made it hard, almost impossible to spot planes in certain areas. Sorry for the pop. I'm going to move my mic. Sorry. Okay. Maybe do that. All right. Um, world scale. I'm using anywhere from 200 to 195. I might down it on some of the Russian planes and the smaller planes like the 109 because it's a smaller cockpit and I want it to be proportional. But for the 190s and the other planes, I just find it more realistic to be able to move my head around uh, and lean over and look over my shoulder and, and, and be in the aircraft versus being like a giant bobblehead smashed into the cockpit where with limited movement like my head smashing the window when you try to turn that fixes all of it the rule of thumb is really the size of the gauges look one up for the particular plane you're flying on online and see a photograph of those gauges you know real size and then compare it hopefully with somebody standing next to it with their hand or something but that's what i did with a lot of the planes you can find a lot of references and that'll help you uh, you don't want to go too big because you know it's just you're just swimming and then then you don't get as much field because you're shrinking your field of view when you do it so you lose a little uh, you know field of view Duh. All right next systems uh, this is the magic all right so we're overriding with csa you can do it with fsr and nis i'm up sampling um, rather than going to the default factory, I'm just bumping up a little bit and it finds that, that I don't think the CSA was actually doing anything unless you up the resolution or down the resolution on the override because, you know, according to the references on the website, you need to do something. And on the FSR and NIS, you can downscale. Well, CSA is kind of built in for the, uh, you know, Microsoft Flight Summers, but it works really good on DCS and it works really good for... Uh, IL-2, you know, for the higher end cards. I don't know about ATI, so I'd like to hear about the higher end ATI cards, how you're doing anything that's equivalent to a 4080 should do it, um, or 3090 in that realm. But if it's down to the 3080s, you know, st you know be careful. It, it's gonna ruin the experience. And I really wanna stress the FPS. You really need, need to make sure that's staying around 90. Don't let it drop. I mean, the lowest I might see in a really overpopulated area is in the 70s. Uh, I've seen it get down to 65 because of ground explosion bombs going off, but it didn't stutter. 
it was smooth and if I wasn't looking at the FPS I wouldn't have noticed at the time and I just happened to glance at it and noticed that it was lower and I was shocked uh, that it wasn't affecting gameplay um, so do do that and you'll have to do a restart when you do don't go too much but here's the trick I don't the 4080 guys might be able to go uh, not 48 but the 4090 might be able to go higher and even the later 5000 series I don't know yet when that comes out um, so you can adjust that you just go down and you know bump it up you could probably go you know a little bit higher upscaling with the higher cards but watch the temperature of your um, headset you know feel the front portion where the, the connection is and if it starts to get really hot I don't recommend doing that because you're might be overstressing the monitor by by up or is it you know resolution um, and, and you can do that with a lot of monitors but the interesting thing with VR is it doesn't um, uh, pinch the image it actually focuses it in uh, and if you notice an IL2 and even DCS some DCS is better in the focusing honestly but IL2 there was a focus issue and, and you would have a difficult time you know focusing on distant objects seeing distances and and you'd miss a lot of shots because your eyes weren't even synchronizing properly for some reason uh, red blue green play with that I uh, this is my current settings I do recommend it um, you can go up and down like a TV do what you like and if you hold the shift key you can do it real quick so you could just realm you know see how stupid it looks but in VR not only does that that look stupid it um, it's unplayable you can't spot anything because everything is one color it's muted it's garbage and the black needs green you know if you know how primary colors work but anyway all right so let's go back up because you can't make colors without these three I think yellow is neutral like white all right anyway I'll play with that letter oh there it goes magic all right last let me close this so that was all the updates the toolkit they haven't had a major update but those settings are phenomenal when you get in the game and it doesn't look grainy like this on the display because I'm you know, doing the Windows mixed reality thing all right get out of this all right so this is what I want to show is the headroom um, when you're in game, when I'm doing the upscaling, which I'll load the game real quick, this number here doesn't dip down below 20%, and my numbers are staying in the low sevens, where before this was like 11 or 12. So I actually got a, a performance bump doing this. So FYI. All right, let's load a game real quick, just to show that. Quick mission. I'm not going to fly. I'm just going to edit it for visual purposes. Because there's a couple setting things i got to show you. All right, this is part three of the video, and I'll tag it. And this is the big one that will see what works for you. But we're going to be using the world scale view, which they call IPD uh, for VR in IL2 uh, to get this effect. And while well, this is loading, I'll explain it. So you, you can kind of see a slight curving in this image on the flat screen, all right? That's happening because of the VR, you know, the way it does it. So let me get out of this tab. All right, so we have this. Oh, wait, I'm gonna load, start. Yeah, this will take a second. So now the game's loaded, all right. All right, so in here, the, the headroom is, you know, you can see 35, 23. Look at how low numbers are. And once I hit pause and just go ahead and, oh, I gotta go back to the game. Boom, all right. So once I hit pause, and I'm just gonna try to send, all right. I had the game crash, but anyway. All right, back to where I was. Um, here's the headroom. That's what you should be seeing. My numbers are better. I don't get that binding issue when I'm not recording. That's all that. Um, it looks a million times better. In fact, I'm going to tab out and kind of show me minute tries. But before we do that, let me center because this is the part of the video that crashed on me. That's what it looks like in game. That good. It's really nice. 
All right, center. Maybe it'll work. Yeah, because you can't see. But yeah, yeah, here we do it. So on this part, we're going to show you the IPD. So I found with the IPD, you can shift it left and right. But what it really does in VR is stretches the image flat versus curved. So this would be a flatter image. This would be more curved. In fact, it gives me a headache. Uh, even with the IPD maxed out or wide or narrow, it doesn't matter. So that would give me a headache. But this here, it just widened the image. So rather than having the curve image, which is, you know, a slight 30 degree angle, it flattens the image out. It would be similar if you curved your screen physically, <laughs> then you could flatten it out. And that's what it's doing. So I highly recommend it. It makes the uh, planes the right size. The distant objects show up perfectly. And you can spot and shoot no problem because you can actually see the pilot. I mean, if they smiled, you probably saw it. But you can see the little meeple in there and shoot them right in the head. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, distances take a little bit to get used to, but use the icons, the old trick. And then once you're used to the distances, you're going to be so happy. You're going to enjoy it. So that's one of the big ones. And that's about it for the toolkit. Um, Oh boy, I got out of it somehow. Get back. All right, so you don't need to leave the advanced FPS. That's just testing. Uh, you know, sh reset that. Gamma in the game, make sure you turn the gamma to 1.0 to 1.5 max. You want it on the higher side. Don't have it down because it's going to offset all the uh, contrast and brightness. If you're in a dark map, no, I apologize to somebody, and you know who you are. I was flying in a dark map, I couldn't see anything, and I was so frustrated. No matter how much to turn the gamma, I was blind. The in-game brightness, you know, really was what I should have been messing with in the dark map. And I just bumped that up, and boom, I could see. And in a dark map, it doesn't look like this washed out, believe me. So you'll be able to get that correct with the contrast. You'll have to play with it, tone it in like a movie, and enjoy it. Overall, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Especially recommended, again, high-end cards only. Don't try to do this with a 3080 or lower. You could test it. I would like to know, but I'm not recommending it. So if you have a 3080 or, or 30, 4070, something in that range, test this. And let me know how high up you could upsample or not at all. But I do recommend at least one and make it an even number, number no odd numbers because you want orientation. And it, I don't know, odd doesn't seem to work right in my brain. But yeah, those things and you'll be fine. All right, guys.